You are now familiar with all types of modeling in Verilog from last three episodes. You have seen the use of assign statements in more than one example from last three episodes. In today's episode, we will focus on various assign statements, their usage and restriction. This will help you to stop misuse of any assign statements as per the Verilog semantics. So without any further delay, let's begin. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we will be discussing the below points. Introduction to the assign statement, multiple use of assign statement. We will talk about the rules we should follow while writing an assign statement. Next, we will do some variations which are acceptable in Verilog for the assignment statement through example. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction to assign statement. Any assignment in Verilog is done using the reserved assign keyword. This one is a library reserved keyword. While we talk, we mention that assign and in actual library, we also have a reserved keyword assign for the same purpose. The LHS of any assign statement must be scalar or vector in nature. So generally any assign statement will have a equal to sign and there will be a right hand part and a left hand part. So this one should be always a scalar or vector in nature. So this should be scalar or vector. In data flow modeling, this keyword is used for continuous assignment. In one of the last episode, you have encountered the data flow modeling in detail. And there we have used the continuous assignment. And there we have used the statement assign somehow like in this manner. Here you can see the example and this is a forever declaration. That means once we declare it, it remains true for the entire stretch of time when the Verilog simulation is ongoing. As you know, the Verilog is a transient simulation in nature. As I mentioned, the continuous assignments are forever. That means we have a time axis T and from T equal to 0 to T equal to T1, the entire stretch, this equation will be valid. So this will be valid for this entire time stretch. Assignment can be both explicit and implicit. So just focus on the word explicit and implicit. Explicit means we write it in detail and implicit we do not write in detail. So let me give some example. So here first we define where A and then we assign a with the logical equation on the right hand side. So here this is called a explicit because here we have used the where keyword, we have used the assign keyword and explicitly we have mentioned everything. So now let me give the implicit example. Here the same thing can be written as where then a then equal to sign and then the expression on the right hand side. So here you can see the assignment operator or the assign statement here this keyword is missing in this particular equation. Here even we are not mentioning the assign keyword here in this equation although we are serving its purpose. So this is a implicit expression for assignment. We will continue in the next slide. So let me change the slide. Delays can be inserted using assign statement. So how? Here the assign, then we give the hashtag delay, the number, and this is 20 time units for which the delay is inserted. And then the expression here. This delay will occur on this expression. So this means these two will be delayed to be assigned to this by this 20 time units. In procedural modeling, assign statements update variables declared under reg, integer, real, or time data types. So this, this, this and this are four type of data types and here we are talking about the procedural modeling that is the procedural behavioral modeling or behavioral procedural modeling. So here these four data types are assigned with the assign statement. The value contained in a variable is kept intact until it is reassigned by another assign statement. Here we have used the assign statement and we have given a value. It will be kept intact until the next occurrence of the reassignment. That means with some logic or some procedure or something, it will be kept intact. And this thing could be 
combination of explicit or implicit so in the first one we have assigned it with the explicit and the later in the inside the procedure we have used the implicit that's okay so there could be permutation and combination of these things however whatever value we have assigned it will kept intact and it will change only at the next reassignment LHS of assignment statement can be a single where rage integer real time all this data type can be in the left hand side of the equation so this is lhs and this is rhs so here there could be this type of datas or data types the variables could be this and generally the lhs is called a target it could be a bit select of a bus so here we have defined a bus or part select of a bus that means here our part select the bus is greater than 2 down to 0 the bus may be 4 down to 0 and from which we are picking up the 2 down to 0 so it's called a part select so it's a part of it so this could be on the lhs and concatenation of the both so these things whatever we have discussed they could be concatenated using the parenthesis so this is a concatenation operator here i have generically used 4x and 4y this could be anything as mentioned above and the concatenation operator can stay in the left hand side where the right hand side can contain something else this kind of expression you are expected to handle in Verilog so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide multiple use of assigned statement here first let me give the structure of assigned statement as per the Verilog LRM this expression is written as assign first the keyword then the target expression which is at the left hand side and, and the right hand side there will be drive strength how many pins it can drive the delay the hashtag time delay we have already discussed and finally the logical expression of signals or constant values so there could be variable or constant and they are combined in terms of of a equation these three things one two and three this can be on the right hand side so at the left hand side only there will be a expression continuous assignment and procedural assignment these two are the main division of application or implementation of the assigned statement we have seen in last episode i will bring up those examples here again just to pinpoint things in your mind so this is our continuous assignment example half adder circuit so we have here the module definition half adder and we have the a b sum and carry then we have defined as input a and b output the term is where data type is where then sum and carry and we have used the assign statements here to define the half adder functionality and here we close you can see these two expressions will be so this is a time axis t and whatever could be here the responses we can add plots here as you have seen in the plotting tools we have used in last couple of episodes these two will be valid till the time t dash so t dash is the finish time these two expression will be valid and this is a continuous assignment so here we are using the assign statement however we are doing the purpose that is a continuous assignment once you take these pictures into your mind you will be able to decipher any already written verilog code once you are working inside an industry so whether it is a continuous assignment or a procedural assignment when you are working as an individual and you have not entered into the company these things is a learning purpose but once you enter an industry there you might have to go see through already written codes and there you will be able to differentiate between the two types that is the continuous type and the procedural type using this example shown in this particular slide let's now move on to the procedural assignment here here circuit of a 2 to 1 max we have already discussed in last couple of episode next uh, we have the module definition that my 2 to 1 max and we have a b s and q then we have defined the inputs and outputs a b s and we have used the rage type data for q and we start our always block here at the rate and here we sensitized a b or s any of this becomes sensitively changed then the inside operation of always whatever we are writing here will execute it will be executed we start with the begin and we write if a is equal to zero then we assign a to q this is a non-blocking assignment which we will talk in the next episode else if a is equal to equal to 1 then we go for q assigned with b 
and then we put end that is the end of always so here is the begin here is the end for this always block here you can see this is a procedural assignment and this is a procedural assignment so here why this is a procedural assignment it is kept under the procedure so this is the procedure if else procedure we have kept inside this and hence it is becoming a procedural assignment and here these are freely placed assignment and hence these are not procedural these are continuous so they don't come under any procedure like this they become independent and hence become continuous in nature over time and here we end our module with the end module so by looking here you can see this this one is a continuous assignment and here this one is a procedural assignment so side by side you can see the difference in between these two and now when you are visiting any code already written in the company what you have joined so there you will be able to differentiate between those whether this is a procedural assignment or this is a continuous assignment we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide assign statement rules to follow the LHS of any assigned statement must be a scalar or vector in nature. Scalar means we have a single bit and vector means we have a bus that you can easily relate as you are a student from electronics. Scalar means it's a where and a vector means it's a bus that is a collection of wares. A range can be assigned only in initial or always block. So a range is a particular data type which is only attached to initial or with the always block. RHS can contain scalar or vector registers and function calls. So the RHS that is the right hand side generally we have an equation. So left hand side is a target and right hand side is our expression. Whatever expression we have build the logical expression or constant or, or variables whatever. So the RHS here will contain scalar or vector registers and function calls. Function we will cover in some later episode and there will be task also which are side by side as a special thing which you cannot find in C but you can find in Verilog a stark difference between a function and a task and we'll talk about their similarity and dissimilarity in some later episode. Whenever any operand on the RHS changes the value LHS will be updated with the new value. So here we again we talk about the equal sign right hand side anything changes it will be stored in the left hand side value immediately that means immediately means immediately with time whatever time t dash the things is changing on the right hand side it will be assigned to the left hand side value this value goes and stored into the left hand side variable whether this is a killer or a vector assign statement which are always active are called continuous assignments so we have exemplified in last slide and the continuous means they are always active so if they are not inside some procedure blocks so procedures are sub blocks inside a code and only once we reach or enter inside that block the procedural code or assignment statement will execute else it will not touch the code so the assignments which are outside of this kind of blocks are called the continuous assignments and generally we have two types of modeling here and we have discussed this in last couple of episodes so these things are very clear here we are just rephrasing the things about the assigned statement so that you have a clarity and you don't get confused over the different usage of assigned statement we're done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide assigned statement variation we will go through a couple of examples and here we will talk about a module and here we did not try to um, write any particular expected kind of digital functionality rather this is an example take it as this so here we will give some variations and you must focus on the variations and not as a module hence we have written the module xyz and we have given the input xyz input x is a bus it is 3 down to 0 it's a 4 bit vector and y is a scalar 1 bit scalar and output is a bus that is 4 down to 0 z is a 5 bit vector net so if you can see 4 plus 1 is 5 so this way this is written we write where 1 down to 0 a and where b and here we use a assign statement here we can write z z means this this is 5 bit vector so we have concatenated x and y directly into the assign statement Next, we have used this bus 3 down to 1, which is a part select and we have concatenated X and Y and pushed this thing, concatenated thing inside this part of the Z. Next, we have the same repetition here. It's a typo. Sorry, folks. Next, we have the Z4. We define with 1. So, we are here we are defining only a bit with a constant. 
here you can see z3 down to 1 xy i think this is same again with this one it's a typo and here we write z3 equal to 0 so we are doing a bit assignment that is the this particular bit of the bus is assigned with 0 let's move on to the further assignments next here we write assign z3 down to 1 as xy assign z3 equal to 1 assign z width assign z width x down 1 down to 0 and y this way also we can write okay this way we also can write that 1 down to 0 and this is y as i have mentioned this is a kind of variation example this is not a uh, this is not a real module so don't focus on the output just think on how we can do the assign variations or the acceptable assign variations here so here we have written assign z2 down to 0 then x1 down to 0 and y1 so this thing has these two has been concatenated and pushed into the z here we have written assign z with 3 y next we have assigned a and b together with x and y so here you can see a and b here uh, on the right hand side we have x and y so x and y this thing have been so these two have been concatenated and pushed into a into sorry a, a concatenated format of a and b so they have been assigned so these are acceptable variation and don't go for the exact meaning because this is again i am saying this is not a proper digital module this is for a example next we have assign i think this is the same and repetition sorry for the typo and here we end module so we have seen here we have different kind of assign statements throughout this what type of assignments can happen in a real case here we have done the variations we have taken a dummy module and we have taken dummy input and dummy output and here these are also dummies so these are not real case or real module however we have just uh, tried to define inside the verilog structure how these variations can happen here and here so all the variation you have seen so these are acceptable variations now let me also add another thing here this one 1 down to 0 a and this is a uh, explicit assignment we have already discussed however i mentioned here again and here we write the same thing as a implicit assignment this kind of assignment plus this kind of assignment the explicit assignment all these kind of variation you can expect inside verilog coding here we have generally used the assign statement inside as a continuous however in a procedural this kind of variation can happen provided there is a procedural block inside which we are putting these assignments these or these or these so these are going in a procedural block in that case this will become a procedural assignment otherwise we don't have a procedural block anywhere in the code and the assign statement is outside of that then this is a continuous assignment let us summarize whatever we have discussed so far the assign statement to be used both outside and inside a procedure can create confusion to an end user outside or inside the assign statement so this is the two positions where we can expect that means outside or inside of a procedure a assign statement can stay and it can create a confusion to the end user that means you as a learner or as a proficient verilog coder in the vlsi industry to get out of this confusion please remember that verilog has two forms of the assignment continuous assignment placed outside any procedures in the data flow modeling and procedural continuous assignments placed within a procedure in the behavioral procedural modeling so these are two types of modeling behavioral and data flow right and in one we have continuous assignments another one we have procedural continuous assignment that means the assignments are put inside a procedural block Continuous assignment statements are separate process that are active throughout the simulation. These continuous assignments are unconditional and they are active throughout the entire time space, entire time stretch for the simulation is going on. Procedural continuous assignment statements become active when the assigned statement is executed in the respective procedure. So once we reach the procedural block of a code, right inside that there is a assign statement written and that becomes executed only the block of code is called upon so this is the two difference so it's a conditional reach the simulator will reach here to the assign statement conditionally and here in continuous it is reached this assignment unconditionally and for the entire time stretch so this is the difference and i think we have summarized our discussion here and we'll move on to the next slide 
Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below. And bye for today.